So now I'm going to give you some trig identities, some old ones that you may already remember, and there are some new ones which te tell us how to add functions. Um, or add trigonometric identities. And then we'll also go over a small little proof that we will need to use for the next proofs of sine, cos, and tan. So let's start to look at our identities. The first thing that you need to remember is sine squared x plus cos squared x equals to 1. So let's just call this our first identity. So these are things that you need to familiarize yourselves or know before we start to do s these questions. Our second identity links tan and sec. So we have 1 plus tan squared x equals to sec squared x. Our third identity links cot and cosec. So we have 1 plus cot squared x equals to cosec squared x. And then we also said that I will tell you what cosec, sec, and cot are. So if we write them as identities here, cosec of x is basically the reciprocal of 1 over sine x. So if you're ever faced with 1 over sine, you can just simply write it as one trig identity, and that is just cosec of x. Number 5, we have 1 over cos x, which is sec x or secant of x, so sec x. And lastly, we have 1 over tan x, which is cot of x. Now, an easier way of remembering this is just to look at the third letter. So if we have cosec of x, so the s corresponds to the sine. If you look at sec, the c, the third letter here, corresponds to the cos. And then if you look at the cot t, it corresponds to the tan. There's a lot to learn here, obviously. So sometimes we have to find easier or faster ways of working these out. Now, the next thing is addition laws. So how do you add two angles with an sine, cos, or a tan? Now, these are just rules that we can take on and just learn. If I put them here, so if we call them just the addition laws, they're also known as the double angle laws, so you can derive the double angle formulas from here, which basically helps us do things like this. So if you're adding sine of an angle plus another angle, and these are fairly useful, not just in the proofs that we're about to do, but if you have overlapping waves, so if you're doing something in medicine where you're measuring more than one wave, perhaps, and they are out of sync or at different angles, you can use these identities to bring them together or combine them into one identity. So sine A plus B gives us sine A cos B plus sine B cos A. This is our first addition law. You can also subtract this, but the signs would change. So if you were looking at subtracting this, you could just put a minus here. So sine A minus B would give you sine A cos B minus sine B cos A. You can predict now that we'll be doing exactly the same for cos and tan. So the second rule here, if we look at cos of A plus B, this is the same as cos A cos B, this time minus sine A sine B. If you want to subtract it, which we won't be doing in our course, but just so you know in case you'd like to at some point, this is cos A minus B and the sign changes here. So that becomes cos A cos B plus sine A sine B. Lastly, we'll look at the addition rule for tan. So we have tan of A plus B. This is the same as tan A plus tan B over 1 minus tan A tan B. And again, we will just be using the addition when we prove. But if you were ever looking at subtracting two angles, you'd have tan A minus B. This becomes a minus and that becomes a plus. There's one more thing that I need to tell you before we move on to the next proof. Now, this isn't part of uh, the identities, and you won't really need to prove it at any point unless you're doing advanced mathematics. And that is proving the limit. 
So if we just put that here as well, that is proving that the limit of sine x over x as the limit of x tends to 0 is equal to 1. So you can imagine this, and we can put this in a different color here, just so that you know that this isn't really part of the course, but we need this in order to prove the next identities of sine, cos, and tan. Now, it's very simple explanation. There's lots and lots of proofs for this. The easiest possible proof here is to treat this as a circle. So if I just go for half a circle here, and imagine that this circle is one unit length. So we say that this length here is one and this length here is one. Essentially, it's the ratio. So we call this angle X in radians. This little bit here is the ratio of the arc length, which is this length here, and the height of this triangle. If we remind ourselves of what the arc length here, so the arc length of any circle is just r theta, and this should be in radians. r in our case is just 1, and theta is x, so the arc length here is just going to be x. If we compare it with this length here, so just the tip of the, as it touches the circle, and the length down, so creating a right angle triangle, you can actually use one of the trig identities, so you can say that sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse. Sine theta will just be sine x. The hypotenuse is just 1, so you can multiply this with 1, gives you the opposite length. So what we're really trying to say here is that this length here, we can change that, the opposite length here is sine of x. That in there. Okay, and the idea behind it here is just calculating the ratio of sine x over x. So remember, sine x in our case is this height, that height there that we're looking for of the triangle, and the x is the arc length there. So those are the two values that we are comparing. So we're doing sine x over x, and the idea behind it is, is that as we make this angle smaller, so as we make this angle smaller and smaller and smaller, they become so close to each other, almost equal. So these values tend towards 1 as the limit of x tends to 0. You can try, that out, try this out with a few angles. You can try and put pi over 2 in here divided by pi over 2, and you can see what value you get. You can then put a smaller angle in, so you can try and put pi over 4 into x and pi over 4 into x, and you will see that your answer is getting closer and closer to 1. And this is one of the easiest ways I can really prove this. There are very long formal proofs to actually prove that sine x over x is 1. Um, as the limit of x tends to 0, there's something called the squeeze theorem, which helps you prove it. So they are quite long derivatives, but graphically, this is perhaps the easiest way to prove it. So what I'm trying to say here is that as your x or the angle becomes small, so as the limit of x tends to 0, we can say that sine x over x equals to 1, tends to 1, or in this case, we can just use this as a definition, equals to 1. And again, I'm only telling you this because we'll need this fact in one of the, in the sine and the cause proof. <laughs>